What does a runner on a track, a falling apple and a car moving up a hill have in common? Well, they all exhibit motion along a straight line. Hello everyone. So today what we learn in this lesson are three things. One, what is meant by motion along a straight line? Two, what is position of a particle on a straight line? And three, what is displacement of a particle? So let's get started. When we say an object is undergoing motion along a straight line, it can be in any direction as long as it is straight. It can be horizontal like a motorbike moving on a straight track. It can be vertical like a rock falling under the force of gravity or it could even be slanted like a car moving up a hill in a straight line. All you need to remember is that the object should be moving in a straight line and not in a curved path like this or this in two or three dimensions. Another thing to note is that a moving object is described as a particle or a point object. So if you have a car, we'll consider it as a point like this or say a falling hammer as a point like this. Now, this is done so that when we study motion of the object, it simplifies the analysis and calculation of their motion. So as an example, you might say a car is at x is equal to 10 meters but we don't know whether the back end of the car is 10 meters from the origin or the front part or the middle. But when we treat the car as a point object, then we can say that this point that represents a car is at 10 meters from the origin and mostly this point is taken as the center of the body. So the branch of physics where we study the path of a motion, including position, velocity, acceleration etc is called kinematics so in kinematics we are not concerned with what is causing it to move that part is covered under dynamics where we will study forces and their effect on bodies and motion okay let us now try to understand what is meant by position of a particle so let us say a cow is grazing in a field and we put a point at the center of the cow's belly to show that we are treating the cow as a point object and all measurements will be done relative to this point. Then someone can say the cow is standing 20 meters away from this tree or another person could say the cow is 50 meters away from this other purple cow. So what is happening is that different people are describing the position or location of the cow relative to different objects in the field and this lack of clarity is not good if we are studying physics and therefore we need a better way to describe the position of the cow. What we do is introduce a reference point and call it the origin from which we measure all distances and let us say this is the origin or point zero and the cow is standing at a distance of 10 meters from the origin. Now we say the cow's position is x is equal to 10 meters. So let us go ahead and put markers at every meter on this line. And if after some time the cow comes here, everyone can say that the cow's position is x is equal to 7 meters from the origin. Now what we also do is put a plus sign next to 7 meters if the cow is on this side of the origin and a negative if it is on the other side of the origin. So if the cow came to this side to graze and is over here at some point of time, we say its position is x is equal to minus 10 meters. And if it is over here at zero mark, we say it is at the origin or x is equal to zero meters. Okay, let us move forward and now understand what really is displacement of a particle. So say you are standing here at five meter mark and we call this position xi where i means initial. So xi is the initial position and then after some time you are at position xf or x final at nine meter mark. Then your displacement is denoted by delta x where the word delta means difference and therefore delta x is difference in two x positions and equals nine meters minus five meters that equals four meters. Now, 
You see that I've put a plus sign here, which I don't really need to because we do not put a plus sign in front of positive quantities. But why I have done this is to tell you that if this is a positive number, then we say that the displacement is in the right direction or the positive direction of x axis. And this is necessary to tell because displacement is a vector quantity. And we know that every vector quantity has magnitude and direction. So in this case, the magnitude is 4 meters and the direction is this. And we use a plus sign to indicate the direction. So if somebody says that the displacement is minus 6 meters, you should immediately understand that the object has moved 6 meters and in the negative x direction. So now we should understand the difference between displacement and distance. Well, let us say your cow moved from this point to this to this and finally came here. So we say that the distance covered by the cow is 3 meters plus 4 meters plus 3 meters or a total of 10 meters. But we say the displacement is 4 meters. So you see, when we measure displacement, we do not worry about where all the cow went while moving between these two points. It could have gone to drink water from the well or checked on the purple cow or whatever all we are concerned with is the initial position and the final position. In other words, the magnitude of displacement is the shortest distance between the initial position and the final position. And this can only be a straight line drawn between the two points. Another example I think will be useful to understand the difference between distance and displacement is where the cow moved from an initial position of 2 meters to 5 meters and then to 12 meters and then back to 7 meters as the final position. Then if you ask what is the cow's displacement, we say that the displacement is xf minus xi which equals 7 meters minus 2 meters or 5 meters. Again you see we do not care about where the cow went between xf and xi. For us, what is important is xi and xf. On the other hand, if we are asked to find the distance covered by the cow, then it would be important to know where all the cow went. So here the distance covered is 3 meters plus 7 meters plus 5 meters or 15 meters. Now let us take another situation where you move from x equal to 5 meters to x is equal to 2 meters. So the displacement here is delta x is equal to x final minus x initial which equals 2 meters minus 5 meters which equals minus 3 meters. So now your displacement in magnitude is 3 meters but the minus sign indicates that you have moved in the negative direction on x axis or you have moved to the left. So you see the sign you get in front of the displacement number indicates the direction of displacement. Let us take another situation where your x initial position is minus 5 meters and your final position is minus 8 meters. Then we say that your displacement delta x is x final minus x initial that equals minus 8 meters minus minus 5 meters which equals minus 3 meters. So this negative sign shows that you have moved to the left by 3 meters. So for this lesson, there are a few important things you should remember. Number one, position of a particle is always measured relative to the origin. If the object is on the positive side of the x-axis, it is considered a positive position. And if it is on the negative side of the axis, the position is considered a negative position and you should put the sign accordingly. Number two is displacement of a particle delta x equals the final position xf minus the initial position xi. Displacement is a vector quantity and so a positive number indicates movement or displacement in the positive direction of x-axis and a negative number indicates displacement in the negative x-direction. So the number indicates the magnitude of displacement and the sign indicates the direction of displacement. Number three is the magnitude of displacement 
is always the length of the line connecting the initial point and the final point. In other words, it is the shortest distance between the two points. Number four is distance. However, is the length covered when moving between the initial and the final position. Distance is a scalar quantity and has magnitude only and no direction. So if you want to cover kinematics in depth, you should go through this playlist, which can really change the way you understand the topic. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video.